Aortic valve calcium scoring is a predictor of paravalvular aortic regurgitation after transcatheter aortic valve implantation. Degenerative aortic stenosis is the most common native valve disorder in the aging population of industrialized nations. Surgical aortic valve replacement has excellent clinical outcomes, but there is an increasing number of patients with severe aortic stenosis who are not considered surgical candidates because of significant comorbidities. Transcatheter aortic valve implantation has been accepted for selected high-risk patients with symptomatic aortic valve stenosis. The most used prosthesis are the Edward Sapien, used either through the transfemoral or transepical axis, or the core valve revolving system used through a transfemoral or transubclavian approach. Despite the clear benefit of survival and improvement in symptoms, TAV is also associated with the presence of a paravalvular leak in up to 60% of patients. TAVI does not involve excision of the disease native valve. The metal stent of the implanted device leads to compression of the native calcified valve against the aortic annulus and the aortic wall. Paravalvular leak may be related to specific anatomy of the annulus or aortic root, or to the amount and distribution of leaflet and annular classification. The precise mechanism behind the phenomenon of paravalvular leak remains unclear. Although efforts have been made to reduce this incidence significantly, paravalvular leakage is still necessitates additional intervention, like reballoning or valve in valve implantation, in a considerable number of patients and disturb TAVI acceptance in other than in high risk patient populations. Excessive calcification of the aortic valve cast, however, may result in an hemodynamically relevant paravalvular leak. Further sustaining pressure overload, which is poor, poorly tolerated by these patients. Recent studies have revealed that patients with paravalvular leaks have a significantly higher mortality rate. As a result, several imaging methods have been routinely used for procedure planning and proper device selection. Transesophageal echo and CT scans are the most used imaging methods to evaluate calcification of the aortic valve and annular dimensions. Recent studies using CT scan focus on the role of aortic valve calcium and its relation to post-implantation transcatheter aortic valve aortic regurgitation. Transthoracic echocardiography is routinely used for diagnosis of aortic stenosis and for postoperative functional assessment after valve surgery. Transesophageal echo is frequently used for the preoperative screening of patients undergoing TAVI and during the procedure to assess valve and ventricular function. We recently presented the results of a study that investigated the performance of a new echocardiographic calcium score in predicting the occurrence of postoperative aortic regurgitation after TAVI. The calcification score index is a semi quantitative echocardiographic cardiovascular score that uses simple transthoracic echocardiographic parameters like anterior mitral annular calcification, aortic valve sclerosis, and aortic root sclerosis, allowing a characterization of the risk of developing cardiovascular disease. The original variables of classification score index are presented below the aortic root, mitral annular classification, and the aortic valve cusp, considering the right coronary cusp, the left coronary cusp, and the non coronary cusp. For each of them, three scores are identified from 0 to 2, depending on the level and the grade of calcification. 
we modify the score adding information on specific structures of the aortic root like aortic annulus, sinotubular junction and aortic valve commissures that we consider potentially important to assess the risk of postoperative aortic regurgitation after transcatheter valves. All the components of the MERGE classification scoring system were analyzed independently for possible association with the postoperative paravalvular aortic regurgitation and transvalvular aortic regurgitation. The aortic commissures and the three aortic valve casts were the identified anatomical structures to be statistically associated with post-implantation paravalvular aortic regurgitation. The sum of classification scores obtained from the three aortic cusp and commissure was called the TAVI Echocardiographic Classification Score. The TAVI ECCS ranged from 0, normal aortic valve, to 8, diffuse classification of all the three aortic cusp and commissures. The TAVI ECCS correlated significantly with the presence of moderate paravalvular aortic regurgitation. The TAVI ECS study presents a positive correlation with the results of other studies performed using CT scan. The TAVI ECS can predict the development of moderate postoperative paravalvular aortic regurgitation. More calcified is the valve and the commissures and more risk exists of post-implantation paravalvular leak. In the following slides we will present examples of different patterns of aortic valve classification analyzed using the TAVI EC score. We always analyze the valve using a short axis view from a using a transesophageal echo. The analysis of the valve starts always with the right coronary cusp, the left coronary cusp, the non-coronary cusp, and finally with the aortic valve commissures, in accordance with the previously described scores, ranging from 0 to 2, where 0 is the normal echogenicity with flexible motion of the valve, and 2 is a complete classification with stiffness and no motion of a valve. The same appear for the aortic valve commissure where there is a score of zero with a normal echogenicity of all three commissures opening. Score one is an enhanced echogenicity with fusion of one commissure. Score two is a severe classification with multiple fusion of commissure. Although the mechanism is not entirely clear, the most likely explanation is that the calcified natural aortic valve is pushed outward toward the walls of the aorta, 
When a bike classification is present at the level of a commissure or at the circumference of the native valve, it can potentially prevent perfect acquisition between the prosthesis and the aortic walls and thus result in a paravalvular aortic regurgitation at these sites.